Hey guys, it is Friday, July 1st. I cannot believe that it is July and it's 2022. Just in case you were wondering the year. <laughs> it is crazy. So I told you today I'm gonna to talk about homeschooling in the different direction that we're going. And, but first I wanted to share this story with you cause this is freaking ridiculous. So first of all, I used to, before I became Christian, be able to see and hear spirits. And I actually just watched a really good teaching about ghosts. Um, it's on the Divine Mercy channel, so that's interesting if you want to watch that. Because um, I had always believed as a Protestant that if you see anything that it's a demon. Um, so anyway, that's interesting if you want to watch that. I'll link it in the description of this video. Anyway, once I became Christian, I stopped hearing and seeing things. And I'll share some stories with you, but maybe I'll save that for Halloween. I'll save that for the month of October or something. But yeah, so I stopped for a while. And then we moved out to this house in Idaho in September 2021. And I did have the house blessed by a priest. Uh, now, he's a very nice, he was a very nice man. He is a very nice man. He did not bring holy water when he came, uh, which was interesting. Um, yeah. Okay. I'm not, the point of this is not to, anyway, I don't know about the house blessing because what I watched, cause I watched beforehand what it was supposed to be. And it was not, he did not do that. Um, and I also live in the most liberal parish in the entire, I live in the most liberal, my parish is the most liberal in the entire state of Idaho, according to, um, according to some people who are, that help with the traditional Latin mass apostolate here. Anyway, so since I've been here, I have heard noises again. And um, I have amazing friends because the other day when I was recording last week, I mean, there were really, there was nobody else in the house and there was crazy loud noises coming from like right next to me. And so I had some friends send me some exercise salt and epiphany water. And then I have my, um, I have deliverance prayers for use by the lady from Father Ripperger. So <clears throat> I'm going to do that uh, tomorrow. Because there are some prayers for to pray over your house. And I'm going to, yeah, going to do that tomorrow. But anyway, first of all, those prayers are so freaking powerful. And I truly believe that they played a big part in the conversion of one of my very close people that I love, um, helping them to get clean and sober. Before I had the copy that I had now, I had to buy that book twice. So this is my third copy of the book. I keep my prayer books right by my bed. So I can pray them in the morning and pray them at night while the kids are still sleeping. That book disappeared twice. And I mean, you know how sometimes like you lose something and then like you order another one and then you will find it. That never happened with this book. They just, it disappeared twice. And even, and we, like we moved and it was just not there. So I don't know, but now I have, I have mine. I have my third copy, I think third or fourth copy that a month <laughs> of that book. I don't think that the devil wants you to pray those prayers in that book. Anyway, someday I will share the testimony of, um, that person in what I did because I was also yeah, I'll, I'll save that for another video. Anyway, so I've been wanting a Memento Mori rosary. And I was looking for one. 
and I'm super particular about my rosaries because I hate buying them and then they break every time that you use them. I want something that's going to last me a long time and that I can pass down to my kids and then they can pass down to their kids like a, like an heirloom. I want heirloom quality rosary. I'd rather pay a little bit more money for something higher quality. So I found one that I was like, I mean, it just took my breath away. It was so beautiful. And it was $800. And I just could not justify it, but I kept going back to it. And well, this is how I shop. I will sit on it for a little while to make sure that it's something that I really actually do want to purchase. And uh, I asked Keith, I said, can I buy an $800 rosary? And he said, that's up to you. <laughs> and um, I said, you're supposed to tell me no. <laughs> and he said, okay, no, you already have a rosary. Um, I just, like, he would have been fine with me buying it, but I just could not bring myself to pay $800 for a rosary. So I've been wanting to make one myself anyway. So I said, I will just take this, this one that I wanted as like, um, like a model of what I want and purchase similar, like similar pieces, but I changed the, um, like I wanted different Our Father beads and I'm going to add some roses to it. And I wanted it to have a rose crucifix, a bronze rose crucifix. So I said, this will be a great first rosary for me to make. So I bought all the pieces and I'd just been waiting for the rose crucifix to get here. Well, the package got here yesterday. So we went, we brought all the packages inside put them on the table, then we went outside to play, we came back in, made dinner, and after dinner I went to go open the package and get the, um, and get, look at the crucifix, and the package was not there. And we scoured this whole freaking house 15 times. I, I went out and went through the freaking garbage twice. It is not anywhere. The crucifix is not here. So <laughs> I'm like, I, I don't know. I don't know. So I really did not want to have to order another one, but I did. And uh, I'll let you know if this other one shows up miraculously somehow, but the spiritual warfare right now is absolutely insane. So Okay, let's talk about homeschooling. So we have been homeschooling for since 2017, five years. And over the last, well, we've always had a, um, a curriculum that we go by and I just feel like it helps with structure, but we, I'm not, it's weird because it helps with the structure, but I also am not, I'm kind of like nonchalant about it. Like, you know, they, they learn things on their own time and it's not a race and, and I truly believe that And kids, you know, learn so naturally on their own. And the most important thing is that I'm catechizing my kids properly and then everything else will come when it's supposed to. You want to say hi, bub? Say hi. Hi. This is Elijah. How old are you? I'm You're not 17. <laughs> so I have the five kids here, if you don't know. And the ones that are here are ages one, three, six, eight, and nine. Three boys, two girls. Yeah, I have a 16 and 18 year old. Riley, my 16 year old, doesn't live with us full time. He's here with us right now visiting for the summer. He might be moving back in full time with us. We'll see if we do end up moving back east. And then my 18 year old is in the army. Now, kids are kids. Kids are wild and um, loud. And that's just normal kid behavior. But. Somebody said this word a couple weeks ago, and ever since, it's like, yes, that describes how I feel. The word is overstimulated. 
that's how I feel overstimulated. Now, I must say, God has worked an absolutely miraculous change in my heart because I used to have no patience at all, even when my older, my older two went to public school. And I still didn't have patience. And I wasn't even with them all day. Um, and I just believe that that is a result of the conditioning that we... We, that we've been conditioned to believe, you know, we can't be around our kids all day and, you know, can't wait to send them to school. And it's just part of our toxic American culture that we have. Anyway, so I'm, you know, with my kids all the time. Love them. They're just being kids. It's not bad. It's not wrong. It's not, they're not bad. They're really, really, really good kids. They're just kids being kids, but it's um overstimulating. <laughs> And so, and my house, this is, this is a messy house stresses me out so badly. I need everything to be clean and tidy and nobody picks up after themselves in this house. As I'm sure most, a lot of moms can relate to, right? I'm, I cannot be the only one. And it's, I'm frazzled, <laughs> frazzled. And with the spiritual warfare right now, you know, I need to have some order and peace. And so what we're going to do is we are going to go back to a strict Charlotte Mason style schooling and lifestyle. And if you aren't familiar with Charlotte Mason, you must look it up. And they do have a Catholic version. It's called Mater Imbilis. But here's, it's all focused around good habits and building good character, which really are the most important things. And it is, it's a Christian Charlotte Mason is a Protestant Christian curriculum, but Mater Imbilis is the Catholic version. And then you incorporate the Charlotte Mason books into it. You're just going to use Catholic theology. So, um, I got a, <laughs> here's another thing is that I had the books and can, we went through every freaking book in this house, the books on habits, because it like lays out the habits for you to focus on and you focus on one good habit at a time. Nowhere. The books are freaking nowhere. <laughs> and so I had to order new books and these just came in yesterday. Rich, can you give me my other Charlotte Mason books that are over there? <sighs> so let's see. This one is called laying down the rails for kids. It tells you like all the, the good habits that you're gonna work on. So the first one is cleanliness, um, courtesy, kindness, manners, modesty, and purity, neatness, order, regularity, other habits of decency, candor, courage, diligence, fortitude, generosity, gentleness, meekness, patience, respect for other people, temperance, thrift. Thank you, honey. Thank you, sweetie. Attention, imagining, meditation, memorizing, mental effort, observation, perfect execution, reading for instruction, remembering, thinking, um, accuracy, concentration, reflection, thoughtfulness, integrity, obedience, personal initiative, reverence, self-control, sweet, even temper, truthfulness, usefulness, fortitude, health, managing one's own body, music, outdoor life. Self-control in emergencies, self-discipline in habits, self-restraint in indulgences, regularity in devotions, prayer, reading the Bible, praise, reverent attitude, Sunday keeping, thanksgiving, and thought of God. So this is book two. And then there's another book. And look, we just got this book two days ago and look at the cover. <laughs> oh my gosh. We just got it. It says parent prep goals for the habit. So the first habit that you're going to work on is cleanliness. Goals for this habit. Um, a person or story from my life that demonstrates this habit. Additional stories, poems, quotations, and Bible verses that I want to use. Other activities we could do to practice this habit and celebration ideas. And then it has different lessons and um, 
This also incorporates living books. So stories, instead of like a textbook style, you're reading actual stories so they will absorb the information better, which I absolutely love. And then there's different lessons for each habit. So this is what we're gonna start doing and really focusing on the good habits. But my problem is that I get frustrated with having to repeat myself and I'm not diligent, and this is a habit that I need to improve upon, is correcting it the first time. And so the goal is you're gonna have more peace for yourself and for the kids and for the whole household once you build up these habits. And according to Charlotte Mason, it's gonna take about six weeks for one habit. This is the parent book, laying down the rails for yourself as a parent. This is the nature study book, pocket full of pine cones. And then there is an incredible podcast. It's also available on YouTube for Charlotte Mason with really good short lessons for the parents, especially mom, because moms, I mean, if you're a dad, Yes, I don't think that there's probably men watching this video, but <laughs> um, there's an amazing podcast series um, on Charlotte Mason and YouTube videos that are short and so encouraging and uplifting, and I cannot recommend it enough. Oh, hold on one second. This is another thing that I love about Charlotte Mason is that you're using the Bible as a history book. I mean, I just, th just think about right now... Um, I don't trust anything that they're telling me about what's happening right now in the world. I trust approximately nothing. <laughs> and uh, I just wonder how bad is the history. And I know from researching some certain things that we are taught happened that they're just lies. Like we just, it's, you know, the devil. <laughs> anyway. The one thing that we can trust this history is the Bible. And so I love that they use the Bible as history. And this is Bible, this is Bible study, history, and geography all in one. So this is the books Genesis through Deut Deuteronomy and Ancient Egypt. And this you do together as a family. So you're not doing separate history lessons for each grade. So I love this. I am so excited to go through this. So what our schedule is going to look like is going to be, we wake up in the morning, everybody eats, and then cleanliness. <laughs> and that's gonna be brushing our teeth, washing our face, getting changed, all of that stuff, and then tidying up. But one of the first, you know, that's going to be a habit. But then also the very first thing that I'm going to work on <laughs> with the kids is picking up after yourself. Imagine if everybody just picked up and cleaned up after themselves, you would not have a mess in your house. <laughs> so that's what we're going to work on. And I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited to have some order in my house and not feel so overstimulated and frazzled constantly. So, um, all right, I'm just gonna put on a little bit of quick blush. Other than that, um, next week I am headed to Idaho Falls for convention for my business. I'm excited, I've never been to their headquarters. And we're driving together as a family. And um, you know what? Just putting my hair up today in a, in a bun. <laughs> and I don't know if I'm gonna wear a dress today. Because my house is so out of control today, I'm just focusing on cleaning. I will probably, I'm gonna obviously put an apron on, but I think just a basic. And then Keith is supposed to have an interview next week, I believe on Friday. 
for a company in New Hampshire. But somebody recommended South Carolina to me. Actually, more than one person has recommended South Carolina to me. And I would love to go back there. I loved being close to the beach. Absolutely loved it. Um, I'm a beach person for sure. Although I do love the seasons, especially the fall. And I like snow for Christmas. But anyway... He hasn't, I, I would love to go to New Hampshire if possible, but I am going to, you know, look into South Carolina too, because like I said, a bunch of people have been recommending that to me as well. Somebody recommended Virginia to me, but ultimately we, we do, we would like to live in a state that is free. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to throw on an apron and wear my second amendment shirt today and my sweatpants that are getting really snug again. I like lost so much weight when I went to Connecticut and now I've been really terrible about taking my fat burner and I've just been drinking too much coffee and I've like gained all my weight back and then and then I think some on top of that. And so, and I haven't been doing my Pilates either. I need to get back on track because I just, I feel so, I just don't feel good when I am, I don't feel good like this. That's it for today's chat. I pray that you all have an amazing day and I God bless you and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye bye. I hear the Son of God discloses, and he walks with me and he talks with me.